Hello, welcome to another All Alive episode. In this one, I'll show you the new S5 X model by Ola Audio. Well, it's a stereo and immersive mixing headphone. You guys, you all send us a lot of feedback for our forums and emails and social media and so on. Based on that, uh, we designed a completely new headphone, new earbuds, new headband, everything is new, including the speaker. I'm guessing you are wondering why another uh, mixing headphone and the answer is in the title basically, uh, which is stereo and immersive mixing headphone. So that is the why. That is why we are making the S5X series. It's not necessarily better than the S4, but it's definitely a little bit different. And the main difference is in how it's tuned. In the past two years, we've been investing a lot of time, effort and money <laughs> into developing uh, um, a new target curve. Um, so you've heard about target curves probably before. There's a Harman target curve. Um, there's also Dolby X target curve available for rooms, not specifically for headphones and many others. Um, <clears throat> so we focus on developing a target curve that will enable real cool translation of your mix from a binaural renderer to a full-blown immersive studio, whatever, theater or whatever the case may be. So in order to do that, uh, we made a plan of a few steps and we started with, you know, what is the most common uh, target curve used in immersive. We took our gear, meaning our ear simulator, um, and put it in front of uh, certified speakers by Dolby uh, and we captured the response of those speakers at the simulated uh, eardrum position. So basically with the ear simulator we were capturing the frequency response of the speaker and you know kind of like in the same way that a human ear would pick those signals up. So it is at the drum reference point, not like a microphone in the room. So that's different between headphones and, and room design. Um, if you're measuring the room, you just use an omni mic that's designed for measuring. You capture the room and that's it. In headphones, you can't do that because they are relying a lot on the coupling, the acoustic coupling um, and, and the sealed situation that you have on your ears in order to even produce uh, the full spectrum in a balanced uh, way. Um, so if you want to transfer the frequency response of a speaker in a room to a frequency response that will closely match that in a headphone, you need the near simulator uh, to do that and that's exactly what, what we did. So that was level one. Once we gather those information, we data set basically, we extrapolated those out with tolerances that an ear simulator would have, with tolerances that speakers will have. All the toler tolerances were brought in as weights, so we kind of knew where the actual truth would be. Um, and from that, uh, we did uh, A-B testing, human testing. So a guy, an engineer, experienced one, sitting in front of uh, the speakers, listening to uh, um, uh, an immersive mix and then doing you know, quick A and B comparisons, taking notes, making EQs, and we did that quite a few times in order to capture more data and explore how the frequency response that we've captured with the ear simulator actually works uh, in a headphone. Because there is a technical side which is just the frequency response on one side but headphones work slightly different in terms of perception. Um, so if you have, for example, uh, you guys all know that, if you have speakers and you turn them up a little bit to so 85, 90 dB, you will start to feel the rumble. 
uh, the room will start to vibrate differently. And all of that makes uh, your perception of the sound slightly different. In terms of headphones, that's not there. Um, so we need to compensate for that or include that into our research as well. And we did with uh, human A-B testing. So it's basically a research of capturing the frequency response, doing human testing, understanding of the device, the simulator and the tolerances that are involved in order to derive um, well, a new target curve, which we call all a target curve 2022, uh, specifically designed for the S5 model. And that target curve is also used as the flat line, the base, the compensated line in all our measurements that are in the report that you can find on our web page. So that's the S5X, uh, a little bit different uh, headband structure. You can bang it. <laughs> um, there is no more elastic strap uh, because the, um, there are sliders now, so you can rotate them freely. Focus is getting out all the time. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so we have new, new ear pads, new chassis, new pads, new system for adjusting, uh, new connectors over here. And uh, actually let's explore all of, all of that over there. I'll just grab the camera and carry you around. There, that's the door. It says something in Slovenian language like don't answer. Anyway, here we go. Uh, all right, so that's the, the production over here. Let me move the camera just a tad. So over here we have the S5 in production right now. Um, these are just before they go to testing. Uh, so we always measure every pair uh, for quality control. So we have the data of every single individual pair that uh, we identify by its uh, serial number. Um, maybe I'll actually show you that, but before, before we dive into that, let's explore the ear caps a little bit. So that is uh, the S5 ear cap. Um, it's slightly different, so the flow resistor over here uh, was changed, modified. Um, it's always tracking my face how can I get it to, let me get out of the frame, maybe it will work then. Um, so, for example, this is the S5. The speaker looks the same, but it's actually 50 ohm. It's not 30 ohm anymore. And also, it's at an angle, uh, so it's not flushed as it was before, and that helps with um, sound stage and also with comfort, because we're getting over here another two millimeter for your ears, which in terms of uh, human proportions, that's quite significant actually. Um, then we have the new um, plug. So it's not flushed outside anymore. It's not a surface mounted plug. It's inside on a little uh, PCB board over there. The speaker is still mounted kind of in the same way with a few screws. Uh, so you can, um, where's the, this focus is gonna kill me. Come on. It's a Canon camera if you're wondering. Doesn't work. Come on. Come on. Jesus. I'm sorry for this, guys. I'm not an experienced camera operator. Anyway, uh, so there's uh, a few tuning elements over here. Uh, those help with designing a specific frequency response that we're after, or the, all the target curve. Um, and that's basically all that I can say about this chassis. It's different than the S4, which means that uh, upgrading uh, is no longer possible. You can't upgrade from f Series 4 to Series 5. You can only upgrade within the series, uh, meaning uh, from S4 1.1, you can go to 1.2, and so on. Hopefully we'll be able to keep that in the S5 as we develop it further, gather more feedback, and uh, you know, just make an improved version somewhere down the road. Uh, I hope that will be also be 
be possible. Uh, let's explore ear pads real quick. So the new ear pad is perforated um, and uh, the perforated ear pads uh, help with uh, basically with flow resistance. Uh, so when a speaker is in a sealed situation like it is on, on, on the ear, on the ear pad, um, the air has to move out of the way um, as quickly as possible, but at the same time, not too quickly because that would be just a leakage. Uh, and as you guys know, when the headphones has a leakage, there is a drop in bass performance. Uh, so this is a, basically a balancing act to get just the right amount of, of bass. Um, uh, and at the same time, this also helps a little bit with the perception of the sound stage, the feel of them. The, it just kind of the sound gets a little bit uh, bigger because of that. Still velour over here, so they are still very comfortable. You can wear them in, in hot weather as well. Um, these pads are again designed in the same way as the previous were. Uh, so roughly 1000 hours of use, you should uh, buy new ones. Um, so I get this question quite a lot, uh, like why do we need to change your pads? I've been running my Sony's for 20 years. Yeah, congratulations for that, but uh, in terms of sound quality, it's not as it was intended by the manufacturer anymore. Uh, so <laughs> what happens is that the phone in there will get squeezed. It's the same as your pillow. You know, if you're using your pillow for a year, it will be different than it was when it was brand new. Uh, it will support your head differently and that same thing happens with this. There's just memory foam in there that over time uh, it will not perform as it should. Same goes with uh, the velour which is in touch with your skin. So if nothing else is for hygienic reasons you need to replace this probably at around 1000 uh, hours of use. That's our recommendation. But it will be like half a year to a year uh, at a maximum that I would say. Uh, still the same way of uh, putting those on. Uh, so there's, a, there's this notch that you can use uh, and you just turn it like that. In terms of serviceability, it's there as it was in the previous model. Uh, so you can actually let me show you a little bit. So basically that's all the tools required to, to build the headphone. Um, so basically this is the system that goes um, slider and the back plate, it's connected together in the S5 model, uh, which makes it a little bit different than the S4 in terms of serviceability. So you don't really take this off um, as the first step, but the first step would be removing the headband and then dealing with this. And this, those two screws are actually being there. Um, they shouldn't be removed anyway. Fix those uh, little Phillips screws for, for the back plates and for the speaker. So for example, these are the screws used in the speaker. If the focus will show them, uh, they are tiny Phillips screws. So I'm sure all audio engineers will have a toolbox in their studio with that. Um, what else is there? That's the traditional Allen key uh, in America and Europe. We call it Inbus key, right? Uh, again, if it's going to be visible, if the focus, for Christ's sake, can on, come on, fix this focus issue. Jesus. Anyway, it's an Inbus <coughs> that is uh, also used there. In terms of a headband, uh, you can replace uh, the strap. If required, you can replace the headband as a whole. Um, and that's, that's, basically, that's basically all there is. It's a very simple design, uh, completely serviceable, which brings me to the next point. You still have five year warranty, which is really cool. Um, I, I'm yet to find another company doing that. Uh, maybe there's someone, I don't know, but five years is a long time. Um, and we are confident that this design um, can withstand um, you know, five years of constant use uh, by audio engineers all over the world. But the release of the S5X model 
stereo and immersive headphone um, with a turret curve uh, developed as mentioned before specifically for for translating immersive mixes from headphones to speakers and vice versa obviously and that's that's all i have to say until the next time bye <laughs>